So welcome to the Natural Self presentation on what is hypnotherapy. In this presentation, I'm going to be looking a lot towards some of the techniques and skills I've been using in my own hypnotherapy practice for the last 30 years and why they're important to helping people in fixing themselves. Also looking a little bit at what is hypnotherapy and how it may or may not be applied to your own therapeutic practice. During these slides, I've thrown together a few of the ideas and things that I find um, are the questions that come up most, which may be in your own minds. Um, I'm not the greatest with technology, so hopefully these will work very well. I've also left my contact details on the end, so if anybody has any extra questions or things I'd like to know about, they can get in touch with me. My name is Dave Green. I've been teaching hypnotherapy for 27 years. Um, over that time, the practice has developed and changed a lot from what I was originally taught. Um, these days, you often come across many, many different names, titles or variants of what actually is hypnotherapy. And even these days, some of those skills are used in other practices, such as life coaching, business coaching, um, mentoring. Most people have come across the term NLP or neuro linguistic programming, which was, was originally one of the components of hypnotherapy. So when I teach my actual diploma on this now, I no longer actually call it hypnotherapy itself. I actually teach what I call an integrated mind therapy diploma because all of the skills actually overlap. Some of them will be things people already know and understand, but just need to enhance. And some of them are actually just understanding how language works within our own minds. So through understanding some of this, it actually helps us to work better with ourselves, our friends and family, and for those of us that have them, clients who need to develop or change behaviours. So hypnotherapy to me is all about the power to change, either within ourselves if we're using self-hypnosis techniques or through the use of a therapist or external person, a way to actually change and rebalance behaviors, patterns or habits that are holding us back or creating or increasing ones that can help us to develop more positive skills for the future. Now, hypnotherapy is totally based around the concept of language and verbal communication. So for those people who have hearing difficulties or problems, for those people who don't understand the language that we speak or don't have the ability to process that language clearly, the skills that we use within hypnotherapy may not be the most appropriate method of working with those people. But in general, and for the average people, it is very useful for many things. Just a few of those I've put on this slide for us. It can be very useful, especially in overcoming emotional issues or problems where we haven't been able to let go of negative behaviors, guilt, fear, grief, pain, etc., emotionally. It's very, very good for helping to stabilize or reverse health issues or problems, be they physical or mental, especially if they have a large stress component to them. It can be used to change or adapt behaviors for growth or release, such as addictions or self-sabotage. It can also help us to learn new skills or habits quicker and easier than without using hypnotherapy techniques alongside it. One of the ways that it has been used quite a lot within a medical component is actually within regards to anesthesia and pain relief. So for people who suffer from long term ongoing illnesses or problems, it can actually be a very efficient and effective way of turning down chronic pain. It's also especially useful for people who have a large component of within self limiting belief structures. For me, this has been one of the largest areas I've worked with within my own practice. Many of us have limits within us that we don't even know or understand. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those as we work through some of these slides. But it's also hypnotherapy can be used a very large component of sports performance. I've worked a lot with athletes who want to improve scores, tests, timings, etc. Because if we change the way that our mind acknowledges or works within any dynamic, we have the ability to change the effects or the results that are then produced. 
So working with hypnotherapy gives us the potential to unlock potential we may not even be aware that we yet have, or to improve on those things which we already do. So we clearly need to define what is hypnotherapy. Now, in general, I would always refer to it as a hypnotic state or trance state that is used to change, adapt or remove behaviours or habits that are no longer beneficial to a person within the life that they lead. Can also be used to revitalise or create constructive and helpful patterns. Now, still, these definitions are of very little use to us in understanding what hypnotherapy is or how it works. The terminology and language can be very, very difficult to dig through. There are many, many different schools that use different terminology, all trying to imply that they do something slightly different. But the ultimate concept of hypnotherapy is the use of a trance state to change or re rewrite behaviours that occur within the mind. Now, hypnosis or hypnotherapy, which is the applied state of a hypnotic trance, do not mean that somebody has to lose control. One of the first things I have to overcome as a therapist most often is the fear that people have around hypnotherapy and what they may or may not do whilst they're in the state that we use in order to induce change in their life. There is no way that a hypnotherapist can make somebody do anything that is against their will. Now, that is something that some people may try to disagree with, but hypnosis has to be a state of consent. As a therapist using hypnosis as a tool, I'm simply using language patterns to help my clients to reprogram or rebalance their own mind. They have to be able to listen to me and understand what I'm saying to then the, the conscious mind will then filter that information that I ask them to do, which then the subconscious mind will or will not act on depending upon its own belief structure. You know, I often say to a lot of the students when I'm teaching hypnotherapy, you can't tell somebody to empty their bank account into yours because the little filter in their brain when you say that is just going to go, stuff them, I want my money for myself. So, when you see people on the stage acting like chickens and things like that, it's largely because they, what, they are the type of people who will often be the ones who want to play up. They'll have a few drinks in a nightclub and they'll be dancing on a table. It's not something you can create within somebody. It's only something that can be brought to the surface if it already exists. Another thing that I have to cover is within hypnotherapy, you cannot get stuck in a trance state. It's a natural part of your brain's way of processing information. It's a component of actually waking up and going to sleep. So if you're in a hypnotherapy state and something happened to the therapist who put you in it, you would instantly wake up because any noise or anything outside of your understanding would cause your normal brain's reaction to danger or fear to snap you alert and snap you out of the so-called trance state. So at the worst, you may just linger in that state for a few minutes before you wake yourself up and revitalize your mind because of not being aware of what's going on. Nothing can keep you in a state of hypnosis or hypnotherapy. Another big thing that we do need to explain is everybody who is willing to can be hypnotized. As I said before, it is a state of consent. You can't make somebody be hypnotized or create hypnotherapy in somebody who is not willing. Which is why when you do watch any stage shows of hypnotherapy, they always do suggestibility tests first to see who wishes to follow the suggestions and take part in what is taking place. Now, that is something that isn't used in a therapeutic situation. We build rapport with a client by talking to them, understanding their issues or problems, helping them to look at what it is they wish to change and how we as individuals can support them upon their own personal journey to achieve that.
Now, mostly therapeutic sessions are likely to be an hour long. Shorter than that doesn't give you time to help people to get to a relaxed state. Longer than that, and the brain tends to become bored and unfocused. So it actually limits the amount of change that can actually help. It also helps to repeat these patterns sometimes. So people often are told that a series of six sessions is generally the most recommended course of treatment for change. Hypnotherapy can give amazing results within a single session, but that is quite unusual. Most often it takes two, three or four sessions to reinforce and create long term positive change, which would then lead into a follow up session in order to ensure that it stabilizes for future and ongoing results. So having said that everybody can be hypnotized if they're willing, certain people are much more prone or susceptible to it in a positive sense. Those people who are generally quite good at following rules or orders and accepting that are very, very good. Now, most people would think that might be the people who don't overanalyze or don't think too much. It's actually sometimes the opposite. They're more likely to be able to go into a deeper state of trance and therefore access deeper levels of their own mind when they are more used to following orders or suggestions as long as they have comfort, trust and rapport with the person that is suggesting those changes to them. Those people who are in general argumentative or do not like to be given orders or always question everything or analyse everything are actually more difficult to keep in a hypnotic state because they will consciously pull themselves back to a conscious mind level to analyse what is being said rather than simply allowing their mind to be the filter and accept it for them. Having said that, repeated sessions, very good consultations, removal of doubts and fears, for about 96% 96, 96 of people will achieve a level of trance that is suitable for therapeutic change. Some of the hardest people I've found to actually work with are introverted subjects. Their personal fears, their insecurities can often mean that they find it very, very difficult to trust what is being said or to trust themselves to even follow those suggestions clearly. Again, with time, patience and proper questioning and support, they generally do achieve very positive results. Some of my favourite people to work with with hypnotherapy are children, especially working a lot with children with anxiety disorders, ADHD. People often wonder how a child with autism or ADHD can sit still for 30 to 45 minutes in a hypnotic state to actually create positive changes around their behavior. But simply because they're having somebody focusing upon them and focusing towards them in a positive mindset, that often helps them to help themselves. We also generally can then teach those type of children basic techniques for breath work and simple mindfulness and excuse me, self-hypnosis techniques so they can actually start to self-manage some of the negative behaviours within them for themselves. That in itself gives them a lot more confidence. So in future sessions, they often reach a deeper state of trance and therefore greater change even quicker. So as I've already mentioned, when it comes to stage hypnosis, it's not something that most therapeutic hypnotherapist would ever be trained in it's often very very different techniques very scary snap inductions where they like jerk people around causing all sorts of stress responses in the body but they're done with people who want to be the center of attention who want to be seen they're not a way that we would work in a therapy environment because we're trying to build trust and we're trying to build somebody's confidence within themselves because a large reason most of us do not change is because we don't feel confident with the changes or we fear the results if we do. They're two of the largest areas we have to work with when we're actually trying to create long term ongoing development for people who wish to make those changes. So I've obviously used a little bit of jargon already in these slides and the word trance is the most obvious one. Now, when it comes to hypnotherapy, you can't avoid the word trance. 
And when people talk about hypnosis, it is really just saying that somebody who is put into a trance is in a state of hypnosis. Now, the word hypnosis comes from the Greek god hypno, meaning sleep. But when you go into a hypnotic trance, you are not in a state of sleep. You're actually in a state that comes before you sleep. Your brain is still very, very alert and conscious. And because in most trance states we get people to close their eyes, their hearing is actually massively more alert to what is going on around them. If people actually go too deep, they will generally fall asleep, which means that you can't actually create therapeutic change because they're no longer listening to or processing the suggestions that we give them. So helping people to understand that trance is simply a state of focus upon what the therapist is saying helps many of them to lose the fear they have about this concept. Trance is not having free will taken away with, from you. It is not being controlled or undermined in any way. It is about giving you the ability to change yourself. Trance basically allows you to access your own subconscious mind and talk to that deeper part of yourself that often argues with or disagrees with the idea of change that you're trying to create. It's a totally natural state. And so when you're in it, it could, and you feel safe in the environment in which you're in, it allows you to communicate directly with the deeper parts of yourself that are there for protection. And often any negative behaviors that we have are there because at some point we created them to protect ourselves. So what we basically do as hypnotherapists is rewrite or rewire those um, situations and feelings so that they no longer have a negative effect of us out of the context in which they were originally created. By doing so, it enables people to massively improve and redirect their energy to the purpose that the sessions were initially targeted at. So using a trance state enables us completely to create a mind path that works in the way or the direction that we choose it to be, rather than one that the subconscious creates for itself. So as I say, these are a part of falling asleep and part of waking up. But there are many other scenarios every single day where we go through parts of our trance state. Now, trance states actually come at four main different levels, and they're quite simply light, medium, heavy, and one that's called somnambulistic. Somnambulistic is the same as sleepwalkers. And for the sake of therapy, it's actually totally useless because the mind is no longer listening to external stimuli at that level. For therapeutic work, people only need to be in light to medium trance, which is about 96% of the population can achieve those. So every single day when you're sitting down reading a good book, you're watching a TV show or a film, or you're sitting playing a computer game, when you just sit down with a hot coffee and just chill out on the sofa, or you're daydreaming sitting on the bus, these are all different ways in which we can access these states. Even things as boring as doing housework, constantly hoovering, washing the dishes, anything that's a repetitive task if you work in factories, or what many people don't even realise, driving on regular routes where you leave home and arrive at work but don't actually remember any of the journey. They're all trance states where the subconscious mind has taken over because it knows what it's doing, but the conscious mind has closed down to allow us totally to focus upon a singular thing. So the total concept of a trance state is to be singularly focused to the exclusion of external stimuli that don't support the focus we're trying to achieve. So it makes it sound so much less scary. So as you'll have gathered by now, language is the key to your mind. Your mind is a jumble of memories, thoughts, feelings, experiences, both positive and negative, conscious and unconscious and subconscious since you were born. Your mind remembers every single event you have been through or near since your very birth. 
which is why if we use hypnotherapy, we can often find information in people's brains that they didn't even know was there. Like we can get people to go back to a conversation that occurred and they'll talk about overhearing a conversation when they were three, which mentioned something which then set off a pattern in their mind, which then became a behavior that they've then had trouble with ever since. That type of thing I find quite common when I'm doing therapy to find why people have issues or problems. So when we are using language patterns positively, we easily can rewrite or rewire those mind patterns that get in the way or block positive growth or behavior. So working with this, we can create reasonable and positive mind maps within ourselves that create new behaviors or patterns to create positive and actionable change. So understanding the communication that we have internally and the language that we then give off externally gives us very strong clues as to what's really going on in the deeper self. You know, many of us as therapists, when we do consultations, rely a lot on what clients don't tell us or where they don't answer questions. That's just some of the basicest of skills that we learn when we train hypnotherapy wise, because understanding pauses, understanding deleted information, understanding when people try to answer a question with something that isn't related to what we said, give us very, very strong clues as to what's really going on in their minds, even though they may be completely unaware of it for themselves. So language is how we actually lay down memories or patterns in our mind. Now, many people are aware of the different perceptions we all have around singular events. You know, it's always a common thing to mention that if 10 people see a car accident, they'll have 10 different versions of exactly what happened, even though they all observed or saw the same thing. Due to our own experiences or mind patterns, we lay down information in our minds based on the experiences or current understanding. So when we are in a positive mindset, we lay down positive language or positive energies. When we're in a negative mindset, we lay down negative ones. So an example of that is if you're a three-year-old child who's told you can't have an ice cream, you'll be screaming and shouting, you'll be feeling that it's the end of the world because all your friends have got their ice cream, but you've been told you can't have one. That can then be laid down in our mind as a sense of feeling deprived or let down. And at the time, it's a massive emotion. When you look back at it as an adult, it seems really insignificant. But the language patterns our brain talks about to us at that time, combined with the emotional energy that we physically experience, lays down a memory in our mind that can, at other times of feeling deprived, regardless of the cause, actually bring back the same emotional habits, behaviors, or feelings. So we may then lash out emotionally, energetically, or internalize and negatively attack ourselves because of similar things to previous experiences. Working with hypnotherapy, we basically break these links and break these patterns. We do not cause people to lose memories. All we do is stop the negative emotions or feelings of the past having an ongoing effect in the future, regardless of how long that gap has been between the original event and the present one. Often these are things that happen in our minds ongoing all the time without us even being aware of it. But it can also be used in the positive sense to bring back positive behaviors, feelings or emotions that we find it more difficult to use these days. For example, if as a child, you always found it easy to make new friends and interact. But as an adult, you've learned that it's difficult or hard. We can actually rewrite those patterns using previous experiences so that the newly learned behavior overrides the old one based on experiences we've had in both directions. So just think of yourself as a constantly rewriting memory bank. And that memory bank is being written all the time, both consciously and subconsciously. So using hypnotherapy and the patterns of hypnotherapy, we actually create those to be the ones that we desire 
and for a result that we wish to include and change rather than it just occurring naturally and then sometimes being misaligned um, and creating negative behaviours. So it's a way of helping you to train yourself to take control of memories, thoughts and feelings. And it's a way of making sure that the behaviours or attitudes that come from those are positive and developmental rather than destructive. Another big concept to understand is that these patterns, memories and feelings and thoughts are only a part of our past. They do not have to be a part of our future. We are not the behaviours we have previously had. They are simply a data bank which we can use to create ones in the present or the future. So what we do as hypnotherapists is often use the past and the negatives we've been through to create stepping stones to positive change and development rather than feeling that it's trapped or stuck in a rut that's never going to change. I often hear from many of my clients that it can't change. I've tried so many times, nothing's ever helped. They're in their own right, self-limiting beliefs. They're constantly rewriting the negative. A classic one for that is yo-yo dieting. So many people try to come to hypnotherapy because they want to lose weight, but they don't really, in their mind, feel ready to do it just yet. Hypnotherapy can be useful for changing that timeline to make them ready, but it also helps them to have the belief in themselves to achieve the results that they desire. So one thing we teach people is how to understand why their behaviours are happening and how that they within themselves can notice their own triggers and change those behaviours for themselves. If we take control of our own minds, we control all the things that go on within us, be they physical issues, intellectual or emotional. So a large part of hypnotherapy is learning to control the parts of us that are out of control. It's learning to accept that sometimes we have to go through negatives in order to get positives. And it's learning to accept that change is a process of growth. So the big understanding is our mind is made up of two parts, the conscious active part we have total control over and the subconscious part that keeps the behaviours and patterns database running and keeps the aspects of ourself working where we don't have time to process them all consciously. So they help us by evaluating and judging situations around us and then feeding us back to the conscious mind the parts or things it thinks will be useful to us at that time. And then we can evaluate those in the conscious mind before acting. Now, as you can imagine, that makes for a very complex process in our minds. But by taking control of the way that we deal with them, we actually can actively focus and change the way that we then get results. Through hypnotherapy, we basically trick or reprogram the subconscious mind into rewriting or overwriting old negative behavioral patterns by replacing them with new modern ones, which we wish to, wish to have instead. So in the case of um, losing weight, rather than talking about people losing anything, we'll talk about what they can gain because the mind is better at what it can achieve than looking at what it can't. The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between perception or reality. It has no filter in that regard. That's what the conscious mind is for. So anything that we can get to the subconscious mind, it treats as though it is real and active. So the use of visualization is a large component for many people in hypnotherapy. Typically, I'm one of those people who has very poor visualization in my own mind. But oddly, I'm very, very good at helping other people to reprogram theirs. Personally, I work more through feelings. So I have to use more of the NLP techniques that come out of hypnotherapy which are around recentering or rebalancing the feelings that we have based on memories or thoughts. So one thing we do as hypnotherapists is assess the needs of our clients as to whether they're predominantly picture-based, word-based or feeling-based, and then work with the correct skills to help the subconscious mind to access that part, rather than trying to make it work with things that for itself are actually quite difficult.
So another a large component of it, you may have come across some of the concepts of hypnotherapy being used in hospitals for anaesthetic. Hypnotherapy as an anaesthetic existed long before anaesthetic itself did, which is, I find, quite scary. And there are a few Scottish doctors, especially, who really worked in the 1800s using anaesthetic for pain relief for operations with huge success. Since then, there's um, an association for medical and dental hypnosis has actually been set up for medical professionals to also train in the techniques so that they can now use them in a modern setting for people who do not tolerate chemical anesthetics very well. People have even had caesareans or amputations using hypnotherapy alone as a form of pain relief. And it's all a huge part of the market is also used for um, natural childbirth. Not an area I focus on myself. So hypnotherapy is often a last resort for people when it comes to pain. They've often been to the doctor first, had loads of painkillers, often been for all sorts of scans. Now, some of those scans will show physical deformities or problems which need surgery to replace or fix. But often we can have long, on to, long ongoing symptoms for a problem that pain related, which have no cure, like degenerative cartilage, um, tendon issues. These sorts of problems, and arthritis being another classic, we can teach the brain to turn down the pain to a safe or sensible level when it is aware or knows why pain is in the body. It would be very irresponsible to teach anybody how to turn off pain if they haven't investigated why they've got it. Pain is the body's natural warning system to tell us that something is wrong. So personally, I would never work with a client to turn down pain relief if they haven't already been for a wide range of medical scans and tests and have a clear defined image and idea of why they have ongoing pain anyway. You know, it, it, we always have to be air on the side of caution when it comes to such things. For those people who have long term ongoing illnesses, we can actually deal with the stress that occurs around many of these illnesses as well, which in itself generally has an ongoing effect. You know, classic examples of that are arthritis, fibromyalgia, ME, uh, CFS and MS. The more they have people have these issues, the more stressed they are, the worse they become. So it's great to be able to help those type of clients to dial back the problems. We can never say we can cure or remove these issues, but what we can do is help them to have better management of the symptoms so that their body and mind can then help to rebalance or reset as much of that issue or illness as it possibly can. I also have worked a lot with people at end of life care with regards to fear, guilt, pain and stress and also the management of how they're going to feel when they die or how their families are going to cope. So I, I've, even though it was one of the first therapies I personally ever learned, and I've learned over 70 therapies since, hypnotherapy and mind therapies are still my favorite way of working with long-term clients. Because to me, it helps to actually always fix people rather than just manage symptoms for the majority. And even for those where there is no fix, we still have a wide range of tools in the toolbox to make their lives feel significantly better or more positive. Now, one of the large areas that people are aware of hypnotherapy is for addiction. Now, personally, I find them some of the most difficult areas to work with, because depending upon the type of addiction and the habit patterns that people have already created, they may actively fight or resist change to get them well again. Because for many people, addiction has become a coping strategy to not have to deal with other things that are going on in their life. So what we have to do when we're dealing with addiction is find the underlying causes or reasons why they have it. That in itself brings us back to what the labels are for hypnotherapy and hypnosis. I actually classify myself and I was trained as a curative hypnotherapy. I always look for the underlying cause or reason why somebody has an issue or problem. There are versions of hypnotherapy out there which are very much just deal with the symptom. Just talk about that, rebalance it and refocus it. And don't then actually deal with why somebody has that problem. This can be very, very useful as a technique for short term symptom management. 
But if it isn't done properly, those symptoms will always come back or transfer or change into other symptoms that could be even more damaging. For example, if you just do direct suggestion to stop somebody biting their nails, they may then take up drinking too much or overeating. So for me, finding the root cause of the, in the mind as to why a behavior keeps occurring is actually the vital component to unlocking and rebalancing that so that it doesn't reoccur in the future. You know, smoking is the biggest one that used to be pushed towards hypnotherapy. And most people who are actively seeking to stop smoking and do willingly wish to, we can help them to overcome that habit quite simply. However, often people come along for the consultation for that and we actually discover they don't really want to give up. They've just been told they should or feel they should. But for addictions, hypnotherapy can be a very, very good tool. But alongside it, we generally have to have other forms of counselling and mind therapy as well to help them to accept the change so that it will actively work. Which is why most good in-depth hypnotherapy skills courses will teach a range of psychotherapy skills, hypnotherapy skills, NLP, life coaching, etc. as one. Many of them actually came out of the same basic ideas. And it's just bringing them together in a way that gives you therapeutic toolbox, more chance to help an individual client. Now, one of the largest reasons that hypnotherapy in any way, shape or form fails is often timing. If people come to get fixed at the wrong time for them, they often won't get the results that they desire. Or they don't put in the effort themselves to work on the homework they're given between sessions to enhance and improve the developments that the individual sessions can occur. As I said at the start of this presentation, hypnotherapy is a consent state, but it's us working with your subconscious mind to create the change that creates the results. We will often give you homework to do, which is basically there to reinforce the positives that you've occurred or done. And if you don't do those, when you come back for future sessions, it stops them from being as effective as they possibly could. So it is a very positive way of actually helping things to work. If you take on board what you're doing and repeat the patterns we give you so that the behaviors can be broken down. So by the time you come back for the second or third or fourth sessions, your mind is much more willing to accept the opportunities because it's already been programming itself towards the idea of change. Repetition creates greater results. So the more you work on the skills yourself at home when you've been shown them, the quicker and faster long-term change can actually be achieved. We can also speed up that process for people who need to when it comes to learning new skills or if they're doing things like exams where you've got to be able to memorize or retain information far quicker. Hypnotherapy isn't only for the negative things in life. It can actually be used to massively improve growth retention of information, skills enhancements, and even learning new things like languages. So if the timing's right, hypnotherapy can be another key along with your language skills to actually achieve the results that you desire. So as I mentioned earlier, there are quite a few different types of hypnotherapy labels out there. The word hypnosis literally means putting somebody into a trance. Self-hypnosis is guiding yourself into it, which is useful for meditation and things like that, but not generally very useful for therapeutic work. Um, there's, there are lots of versions of hypnosis or hypnotherapy that are direct suggestion, i.e. they will say you will not smoke, you will not eat this, you will not do this behavior. Personally, I find them actually quite destructive rather than useful because the subconscious mind's first reaction to those statements is often why can't I? I need to check that. I need to analyze that. That can make for a very difficult scenario. So if you're going to approach a hypnotherapist for treatment for yourself, be sure you're looking for one who is using a wide range of skills and not relying on direct suggestion. Curative hypnotherapy, as I say, is one of the terms that's used when it means they're going to investigate how and why a behavior has occurred. 
it's not the only way you know if people have been through rape trauma or things like that we would not want to make somebody relive those but for things like why do we overeat or why do we drink too much or why are we insecure finding the root cause can be one of the main keys to unlocking it Clinical hypnotherapy is a term that is basically about the same things as curative hypnotherapy. They're literally going to help find the reasons why something occurs and remove it. But it's a different way of trying to make it sound clinical and more medical than other language, which may seem more fluffy or not so responsible or respectable. The skills are actually the same. Person-centered hypnotherapy is a term for one particular school that I'm aware of. All hypnotherapy is person-centered. We literally look at the individual, we look at their particular reasons for why things occur. You know, group hypnosis does not work for therapy. You have to be able to deal with individuals' needs. So group hypnotherapy can be very, very good for relaxation or meditation but it's not a therapeutic tool for change. We have to be able to evaluate how a client deals with or reacts to each individual thing that we say or do when working with them. And that in itself helps us to then find their triggers, their motivations and their action points. So that when we work with that client, we then help them to find the bridge to success that they choose. So that when they walk out of our sessions, they don't feel that they're doing somebody else's program. They're doing one that's theirs specific to themselves. So another thing you have to watch out with is when you go to some hypnotherapists, they literally rely on reading scripts to a client in order to achieve results. Now, this is a really negative and bad way of working. It tends to involve a lot of direct suggestion. They tend to use fixed ideas, which may or may not work for a specific client. And it's not individual enough, in my opinion, to help people to succeed. Often when people have had script based hypnotherapy, it can deal with symptoms in a small and effective way. But it's not always as effective as tailoring the language and patterns to the client and the client's responses that they talk about during their session. Transformational hypnotherapy, well, to me, all hypnotherapy is transformational. As long as the client is engaged with the process and as long as the results are being achieved, everybody transforms. The reason I went to learn hypnotherapy initially was it had been one of the skills that had been used when I went to a counselling session myself in my teens that helped me to overcome insecurity and issues with confidence, which led me into learning it so that I could help others. Classic example of the therapist who was the person who needed it initially. So when it comes to seeking hypnotherapy for yourself, or if you choose to take on some of this as a part of your own therapeutic practice, it pays to understand these different terms and the ways that we work. By doing so, it enables you to actually help yourself to help others. Because even if you don't want to be a therapist in the hypnotherapy world yourself, you don't want to get into mind therapy. Many people are now using the tools and the skills that are taught as hypnotherapy to be life coaches or mentors. It also helps us to improve our own business practice because the language skills that we learn help us with regards to our marketing and our promotion. It helps us to have confidence in ourselves and our skills, as well as to deal with those difficult clients who may want to overpower you emotionally or question and analyze you a lot. It can be very, very good at helping us to deal with personal interaction with friends, relatives and relationships, as well as helping us to actually understand how and why certain relationships and dynamics go wrong in our lives. For me, hypnotherapy literally unlocked a whole toolbox of change. It makes you a terrible people watcher, though. You can't help but understand people and even negative or positive behaviours and how they tick after you've observed them for a while. Because parts of hypnotherapy include the non-verbal communication as much as the verbal. So for me, I found hypnotherapy helped me to actually push all of my other practices quite well. When we do therapeutic consultations for massage, reflex, energy healing, we have to ask a wide range of questions about the client's issues or problems for legal reasons. 
knowing how and why we ask those questions will help us to improve them so that we get the best information and therefore the best results for the change that we desire for our clients. So for those people who don't want to be full on hypnotherapists, I do actually run a wide range of therapeutic and therapy language skill workshops so that you can build these techniques and skills into your practice without having to do full diplomas. You know, many, many hypnotherapy courses are broken down into intermediate, beginners, advanced type levels. Personally, I don't think they're very useful because when you go into a client's mind and help them to understand themselves, you have no idea what you're engaging with until they open their mouth. When I first started with hypnotherapy, I didn't believe in past lives whatsoever. And then by working with clients and asking them to go back to the start of their problems, some of them brought up things which I found to be based on past lives or told, that they told me were past lives. So the mind can access information that may be outside the remit or understanding of the modern average therapist's ideas or beliefs. So I had to question some of my own skills and belief structures when I was developing my skill base as a therapist. But because when we are working with a client's mind or language, we have to work within their framework or concept in order to help them. Implying our own rules upon a client's mind does not work. Because we believe or think a certain way does not mean that it is right for others. So working with this idea, we massively create better rapport and better results. So overall, we have the ability to massively change and focus for the development and opportunity of ourselves and our clients within our own business practice. It's massively increased my bookings, my retention rate, and also the range of things that I'm able to offer. So skills-wise, it helps us to understand people's language, their language patterns. It also helps us to understand how and why sometimes even our physical therapy doesn't create the results that we always want. Sometimes the mind can create, it, can, can create a pattern which stops the body from healing. A classic example of that is whiplash. Years after people have had car accidents, for example, their body's energy signature and their minds can still say that there is an issue with the body, even though the physical has fully healed. Using hypnotherapy, we can reprogram or reset those patterns so that long term pain or issues that are there or the fear of having another accident can be made to go away. You know, classic examples for me in my practice have been people who were scared of spiders who then when driving have had a spider come down out of a like out of their weak mirrors and then cause them to crash their cars. Those people have come along in order to deal with their phobia of spiders, but we also find that they've then created fears of crashing again. So we end up working on multiple different issues. Because one of the things that happens when we're dealing with the mind is as you peel away each issue, sometimes you find it was protecting another one that lay underneath, which is why singular sessions for hypnotherapy are often negative and why direct suggestion as a form of symptom management long-term hasn't got very good results. So hopefully I've introduced you to a fair range of the concepts of hypnotherapy, helped you to understand some of the ideas about who can and can't be helped, helped you to understand that it isn't just a negative thing and there's nothing to be scared of, and given the idea that it can be useful to learn some of these techniques to apply for yourself in your own life or your own practice. So if you do wish to get in touch with myself, you can follow my Facebook or Instagram feeds using Natural Self UK. You can email me on dave at naturalself.co.uk or you can check out my website at naturalself.co.uk. I teach a whole range of courses and workshops that relate to not only mind therapies, but also practical therapies like massage, aromatherapy, reflexology. I also teach a wide range of energy techniques like Reiki, chakra rebalancing, crystal healing, as well as fitness workshops and courses. Hopefully you've enjoyed the presentation. Give, drop me an email, let me have any feedback. If there's any questions, let me know because I can always provide some updated fact sheets for the future. Enjoy the rest of your day.
look out for any other presentations that we have going on with the rest of the week. Thank you.